World War II was a war that no one will soon forget, especially if you had to live through it. By the end of World War II, 70,000 buildings in and around the city of London were destroyed. This left a massive amount of rebuilding for Londoners at the start of the 1950s. Londoners wanted security and stability in their lives more than anything at this point. Their city and buildings had been reduced to rubble by German bombs. The architectural style to rebuild in would end up being brutalism. Instantly recognizable by its sharp angles, all metal, glass, and concrete, it has a distinct appearance that is hard to miss. Brutalism saw its rise as Europe rebuilt in the 1950s. The term brutalism itself was coined by Swedish architect Hans Asplund in 1950 when describing the Villa Goth House in Uppsala, Sweden. It is this harsh and grating simplicity that gives brutalism its name. It is a style that is so simple that it is aggressive in its unfinished and cold nature. Brutalism was in harsh contrast compared to the other major prevalent architectural design style of the time, this being Art Deco, which unlike brutalism, covered up any structural aspects and had a very frilly look that was reminiscent of the Roaring Twenties. As brutalism spread, more buildings were rebuilt in this style. One hallmark of brutalism is the exposed structural aspects in the interior of the building, while the outside is usually made up out of concrete. In America, brutalism saw its rise later in the 50s. The most common place to see brutalism here in America is in public buildings and educational institutes that were rebuilt at the end of the Great Depression. At the start of the 1940s, a lot of America's infrastructure needed rebuilding. When the war ended and it came time to design new buildings, America looked to Britain for inspiration and brutalism due to its cheap construction costs and modern for the time style was very appealing. In my home state of Rhode Island, there are many examples of this era of brutalism. The University of Rhode Island's Fine Arts Building is a great example of brutalist architecture. Hello, this is field correspondent and certified brutalism expert Jacob Duhame here at the University of Rhode Island's Fine Arts Center to look at some brutalism. Notice the rigid and blocky poured over concrete. Wow, it really is inspiring. Around to the back of the building, we can see that it is actually undergoing some renovations where it is losing some of its typical brutalist characteristics, which is a shame. It brings a tear to my eye to see such great brutalism go to waste. Anyways, this is field correspondent Jacob Duhame signing off. Another very famous example in Rhode Island is CCRI's Night Campus. It is a curved, long building with small slit windows and a rounded off concrete overhang. Other parts of New England have also seen some very famous brutalist buildings, including one of my personal favorites, Boston City Hall. Hated by some and loved by others, it is a very divisive building to this day. Boston City Hall was built in 1969 after a worldwide contest where different people designed and proposed buildings. The design that won was by Gerald Coleman and Michael McKinnell. While hated by a lot of the public, the building was praised universally by architects and art critics. The young designer's careers were accelerated by the initial praise of the design, with both Mr. McCollin and Mr. McKinnell accepting jobs at Harvard's School of Design. While there was some criticism of the building as it was being built, public opinion would not turn against it until later, when brutalism was far less popular. Today, brutalism is at risk of being misunderstood. In the 1950s, when London was being rebuilt, the style made sense to show people that London would stand up strong with these monolithic concrete buildings. Today, people often regard them as eyesores on the modern sleek skyline due to their aggressive nature. It is unfair to judge these buildings by the standards and styles of our time when asked to look at brutalism from the view of the people in the 1950s and the style that existed then. The people of London had been dragged through hell and endured, and brutalism was the knee-jerk reaction to that the destruction of old London had brought. People think that brutalism is just too harsh for people to live or work in, but often they miss the point of the design. 
It was supposed to be harsh and grating in design, but comforting in its firm and rigid design layout. It is important to preserve a piece of this post-war past for future generations. Thank you. It's all over but the cry and nobody's crying but me Friends all over No, I'm dry To forget about How much I care for you 